Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, at your service to talk about quarter wavelength sections of transmission line. I'm probably going to need more than one video to completely uh, discuss what I'd like to talk about with this particular piece of hardware. What I've drawn here is a piece of what you would normally think of as ladder line, parallel wire transmission line. Uh, but it could just as well be coaxial cable or ribbon or any other type of transmission line. The important consideration here is that it be one quarter of, an, of a wavelength long in electrical terms, and that means you have to take the velocity factor of the line into account. Uh, I did a video on velocity factor. Typically a ladder line like this, the, the uh, wires are these lines here and these vertical things are the plastic spacers. If you've seen ladder line, you know what I mean. Um, but uh, typically the velocity factor of this type of a line is about 90%. Coaxial cable can range anywhere from 66% to 75 or maybe even 80%. Tele television ribbon about 80 percent, window line about 85 percent. Window line is like big TV ribbon with holes cut in the dielectric to make it uh, somewhat less lossy. Uh, but in any case what you have here is a quarter wavelength long section of transmission line. The input impedance let us call that X, and let's suppose that we have a purely resistive input impedance and a purely resistive output impedance. Uh, then we also have what we might call the characteristic impedance of the line. We might call that just Z, uh, although typically it uh, has a little sub-zero down there. That is the characteristic impedance of this transmission line. For ladder line, it's somewhere in the order of 450 to 600 ohms. You might even sometimes see ladder line with a characteristic impedance as low as 300 ohms. The type I've seen has the conductors spaced at a, about an inch apart and then these plastic spacers are about every six inches. Uh, resulting in a so-called 450 ohm ladder line. But for now, let's just think of the characteristic impedance as Z sub zero. All right, now, what we have in a situation like this is something very interesting. Suppose that you have a purely resistive impedance at this end, like an antenna. This is the output. Maybe you have a dipole antenna connected here, a half-wave dipole, maybe about 73 ohms. But if you operate it on the second harmonic, it becomes two half-waves in phase with a very high purely resistive impedance, somewhere maybe on the order of a couple of thousand ohms for a wire antenna. So you're going to have a significant mismatch at the far end of a, of a line like this, and that's... Uh, that's uh, not uh, necessarily a bad thing in a low loss line such as this. You do have to watch for the magnitude of the voltage at a voltage loop and the magnitude of the current in the wires at a current loop if you are running maximum legal limit power and you have a very high SWR, you may get very high voltages and quite high RF currents in this line and they can cause problems for you if the SWR gets way out of hand. But the loss is rarely of a much concern in a ladder line like this for reasons that I've also outlined in another video. Well, if you have a characteristic impedance of Z sub zero and you have a purely resistive impedance here, and that's important, it needs to be a pure resistance, no reactance. That means no inductance or capacitance effects. Then you will get another purely resistive impedance over here. Maybe we'd call this R sub X. We could call this R sub Y. 
these values are going to be related according to a very specific mathematical formula. The characteristic impedance of this line is, must be equal to the geometric mean of x and y. And I also made a video defining geometric mean. It's the square root of x, y. That will give you the characteristic impedance of the line. Now, uh, in general, <coughs> uh, you're not going to use this formula and have predetermined x and y values and then try to figure out z on that basis. What you're going to have is a predetermined characteristic impedance. And then you are going to have specific value for y and a specific value then resulting for x. So what you need to do then is transform this formula. Suppose you want to calculate x in terms of z and y. You know y and you know z. You want to calculate x. The way that you do that is you start by squaring both sides of this equation. Then you get that. Then you get rid of the y here and divide by it over here. You divide through by y essentially. So you're going to get that. The input impedance is pure resistance x equal to the characteristic impedance of the line divided by this impedance here. So let's just suppose that you connect this thing to a, um, to a dipole antenna. The output goes to a dipole antenna. Get rid of all of this. x equals z squared z sub naught squared over y. Well, suppose that this impedance here is 73 ohms. That is a half-wave dipole. You want to know what x is going to be. You are using 450 ohm ladder line. Well, you can calculate x by squaring this 450. And when you do that, let's just go ahead and do that with a calculator. Four, oops. I don't know why that calculator keeps disappearing on me. Uh, 450 squared divided by 73 equals 2773 ohms pure resistance at this point right here. 2773. Let's just call it 2800 ohms for all intents and purposes. That's a mighty high impedance, even for a pure resistance. But most transmatches, or most good ones, will be able to match that to 50 ohms. And if you can't match that to 50 ohms, then, uh, well, <laughs> you're going to have to change the length of that transmission line if you have a transmatch there. But this is what you're going to end up with. Now, contrary-wise, Let's suppose that you have a 50 ohm transmitter, 50 ohm radio right here. So x equals 50. Now we can transpose x and y in this equation. You do the algebra. I, oops. Well, I made a mistake there. I, mean, I meant to say y here. And then this is x. x, y. Suppose now that you have 50 ohms and you, you want to have 50 ohms here. You have a quarter wavelength section of 450 ohm line. What, what is the antenna resistance going to be to make a perfect match to 50 ohms there? What is Y going to be? Well, you calculate Z sub naught squared over X. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll launch the calculator again, and how much do you want to bet it's going to disappear the instant I touch it? But uh, 450 squared, it didn't. Oh, glory be. Divided by 50. 4,050 ohms. 4050. Let's just say 4,000 ohms. Pure resistance. 
So if you have a really well-constructed two half waves in phase antenna, wire antenna, way up high, away from obstructions and everything, it might have a resistance that high. Then you would have a perfect match to 50 ohms. But even if it came out at 2,000 ohms, you'd still have a pretty good match. So that is where you can tailor the length of a transmission line sometimes and get a very specific impedance transformation uh, with a line like this. And this is just an example of that. I'm, I may do some more videos about the properties of this type of uh, hardware because it's really quite an interesting and versatile thing. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, signing off, saying 73 for now. So long.